Hello guys and welcome to this webinar series. My name is Sander Agelink. I'm a student and aspiring environment artist based in the Netherlands. During this video series I will take you through my thought process of making an environment in Unreal Engine. I will focus on breaking down complex tasks into simple ones, how I like to use references, how to approach optimization and modular assets, and how to present your work on your portfolio. As of this recording, I have only done some preliminary research into this project, so it's going to be an adventure for the both of us. By the end of this series, I hope that both you and I will have a new pro uh, project ready for our portfolios. So what are we going to do? We are going to try and recreate this scene here. It is a painting by Jean-Léon Jérôme. I hope I didn't butcher that name. It's a depiction of uh, um, of the carpet merchants uh, at the court of the rug market in Cairo. I really fell in love with this picture. I love the colors in here. It's very vibrant. And I think it's also fairly doable. There's not too much going on into this scene, but there's also a few um, challenges waiting for us. Uh, I think particularly the, the small trims that are on the walls that f look very irregular. So yeah, that's something that we're going to figure out. A lot of worries that I hear from people is that they feel daunted by all the tasks that are waiting for them when they're starting a new environment. It looks very complex and I want to show how I start a project. I think it's important to know that it's not that important to, you don't need to know everything from the start. You only need to know what the first step or two is, and eventually you will figure it out as you get, get further into this project. Um, yeah, so as of this recording, I haven't started anything yet, um, except some research, as I said before. So, I will face this challenge as well, and I'll try and explain every step I'll take while solving these problems. So here's some of the research I've done. Um, I've got my notes. So the first thing when doing, uh, before doing your research is you have to ask yourself a few questions. Let's uh, hop into Photoshop real quick. So it really helps to have a picture like this um, starting your project. It answers a lot of your questions, uh, but it also, there's, there's still a few things that we have to figure out. So let's note these. Let's uh, add a bit of a solid color in there. There we go. So what are some things that we don't know yet? Actually, let's start with the things that we want to accomplish with our project. I think it's super important to have a few goals to work on. You shouldn't work on a project for the sake of making an awesome project. Um, in my experience, it really helps to have something that you want to accomplish, but it will, uh, whether that is create some really cool lighting or explore a technical aspect like making a shader or making modular assets. Having one thing to focus on to improve, it'll also improve all the other things around your projects. So what are some of my goals with this project? Let's write them down. It's black. Okay. Oh, what's this font? Let's grab a normal font. This is fine. What are our goals? So one of my goals with this project is I want to turn 
this scene into a modular scene. I'm gonna make modular assets. I want, to, want this to be a game ready scene. So that's our first goal. The second one is I I really want to add a lot of atmosphere to this to this scene. I really want it to feel like you're there when you're seeing this environment uh, with little lights and little smoke effects and Unfortunately, I am not a character artist. I cannot, I'm not going to make these characters for this video series. I'm just going to focus on the, the architecture and the carpets that are in the scene. So we want to emphasize that somehow, since we're lacking the characters in our case. So it's another goal. Um, the third thing is I love the vibrancy, the, the colors of these characters that are contrasting against the browns of the walls. Um, kind of comes back to the previous point. But yeah, we, we're going to have to find a way to bring that back. I think little lights are going to contribute a lot. I'll come back to that later when we're going to review the research I've done. Um, right, so I guess for now these are my main goals. Another thing we want to um, think of and researching is uh, the missing information. As I said, there's a lot of information in this picture, but there, there's also a lot of stuff missing. For example, we don't know what, uh, what the walls look like behind us. What is some other information that we don't know? Um, we don't know um, how we can break this down uh, modularly. I, th I think it's a little bit of a cheat. This, this point was already mentioned here, uh, but I'll, I'll put it down there anyways. Let's see, what is some other information we still need? Think, I can't think of anything at the moment. We'll, we'll leave it at this for now. Might come back to this later. Oh. Right, so does this work in Photoshop? Go like this. So here we already have a few points to um, to focus on when doing our research. These are the things I thought of as well. Um, so let me grab my research, what I have so far. That's, you know what? I am putting these on the list as well as a reminder. I haven't done it yet. There we go. So this is our main reference. So the first thing I researched is, what is this scene, actually? Um, I knew I loved this picture before I actually knew what it was about. And basically, it's about this um, French painter who traveled a lot in the Middle East. And this scene takes place in Egypt. And he witnessed a... Um, a bunch of carpet merchants, people who sell carpets, at the court of the rock market in Cairo, uh, which he had visited in 1885. Well, I, I had no idea what a court of the rock market is. I didn't, I didn't know there were courts. Um, I didn't find any information on what these things actually are. But after doing a bit of research, like the first thing I wanted to research is um, what is this architecture? Are there any similar buildings that look like this? Is this actually, does this building exist, this room? Unfortunately, I could not find the, if this is an actual location. Uh, I assumed it was. Uh, maybe it got torn down. However, I got super, super lucky because after a bit of research, um, yeah, there's a few things I knew. It, it's in Cairo, then Egypt. So that's something to go off of. 
And after a little bit of research, I was able to find this museum called uh, the Geyer Anderson Museum, which is almost identical to, to the reference image. Here's the reference image. Look, here's the door. There's a little arch here with the window, and then there's this open thing with a wooden beam, etc., etc. Little stairs here. And it's all here. You have the stairs, the thing, there's a little arch here, the wooden beams, the, the open area here. And it's all in 360. So now we know what the backside is. We have this information confirmed. Now there's a few differences. For example, this wall is yeah, it's just a wall. There's no door here, like like there is uh, here in the reference. So what I'm probably going to do is shift around a few things. Maybe I'll grab one of these doors and put them here and then maybe make this a solid part. So we're going to make a few small changes. But this is a dream reference. There's another shot from up here. You can see if it loads. But it looks like for this fella to stand up here, be like this for him. I think this is amazing. And something I loved is the ceiling here. Like there's so much detail. It's gonna be so much fun to turn this into trim sheets, which I, th I think I'm gonna make a lot of trim sheets for this environment. It's gonna be a big focus of this project. Right, so with that, we've al al solved almost all of our questions on the architecture. Uh, another thing I noticed is there's, there's, a few, there's a bunch of these wooden structures upstairs here. Um, yeah, I found some, oh yeah, here. Here you can see what these are. They're like these terraces or something. I'm not sure how to call them. I'm not sure if I'm going to make these because I know that I'm not going to place the camera all the way up here, but we'll see. A few more of these images, the Geyer Anderson Museum. You can see a top view of this floor. It's a little different. They have this little um, courtyard thing in the middle. Some more references for the doors. I noticed there's like a little door here. So I wondered what the, what we could do with the textures on the, the door there. So the next thing is uh, researching what these carpets, um, these courts look like, these carpet markets or rug markets. Uh, there's not going to be characters in there, but I still want it to feel like people work here and they were like maybe on a break and they'll be back in five minutes. So maybe the smoke is, there's still some smoke of people doing things and um, I wanted to figure out what kind of objects are around in this sort of environment. Unfortunately, there's none in this. There's just the carpets and nothing else. Uh, and I, I want to add something else as well. So that's what I did, researching other pictures of these locations from the same time frame. And a few things I noticed are little um, stools, with really nice, interesting patterns. Uh, there's like a bunch of these lamps hanging, vases. Um, yeah, so we can can all copy these. So I guess it's important to remember where they're placed as well. Uh, you wouldn't, I don't think you would expect too many of these objects in here, but I think I'm going to take a little bit of creative liberty in there. Maybe there are some other markets as well. Some some dude selling lamps around the corner. It's kind of leaking into this courtyard, trying to. Um, Get a bit of sales of these richer salesmen. I guess these people would a bit be a bit more rich selling these rugs. I know they are really valuable. Uh, here you can see some more pots, lamps hanging. There's another guy selling a rug. Maybe some I forgot what they're called. Those smoking devices. Um, 
yeah, so that's that. Here they're selling, doing the same thing, they're selling it outside. So that's that. So the next thing, um, oh yeah, here's, here's a few more items of actual photos of these places. I also took some references from uh, Marrakesh in Morocco. There's there's some similarities between the two locations I found. Uh, here you can see like more pots, pans. So I expect expect a bunch of pots and pans <laughs> in the environment as well. I like how things are hanging from the ceiling with little ornaments. Maybe you could have little pillows. I don't know. Um, I really love this scene. Maybe we'll try something like this as well. Maybe one of the walls is completely covered in these rugs, little ropes hanging in between um, two corners of the thing. Maybe, yeah, ropes hanging here where carpets hang over or used to hang little clips. Maybe they're making these things in the next room and some of them are drying after being painted. That's that's kind of the vibe I want to go for. I, I, I absolutely love this picture. There's another angle of the same picture. And maybe there's some clothing as well, like some some skirts. Um, I assume the process is similar, at least for coloring it. I'm a little bit ignorant about it. Yeah, so maybe we could hang up some of these themes where things are hanging on. I love that as well. Breaks up the wall a bit. Maybe these little overhangs to break up the color of the wall. Maybe add some wooden, I mean some bluish wood in the door and window frames. So add a bit more color in the interior areas. Some signs would be great as well with text on there. Fortunately I do not speak the language or write it so I'll have to ask some some help for that um, is there anything else here oh yeah I love this image lots and lots of stuff just yeah stuff everywhere and then for the lighting there's this really famous market in Cairo I found out I don't know how to pronounce this the Khan Al Khalili market and it looks so magical to me. It's like stepping into Hogwarts during a holiday. And that's something I would love to try as well. It's, yeah, it looks fantastic, all this. I, I don't want to, how do you say it? I don't want this to feel too unrealistic. I don't, so I don't want to push it too much. But I think it would be worth it, like adding like lots of Lots of warm lights everywhere makes it feel very inviting. Like maybe the now what is the time frame here? That's also a few questions you could ask yourselves. Um, what's the oh keep making new thing? What's what's the season? What's the weather? Uh, time of day. These are these are also important questions because you would assume that like they might be selling different rugs in the summer than in the winter, like maybe warmer clothing, etc. Yeah. So I think mine will take place at the end of the day. So. The sun is slowly setting, it's still light outside, but people are starting to light their lamps everywhere. That's, I think that, that's what I want to go for, weather. So when it comes to weather, um, having lots of variety or roughness information looks really good in 3D. Having little shiny bits next to rough bits really makes the scene pop a lot, especially if Things are moving and yeah therefore wetness helps a lot so like wetter um yeah wetter weather 
So, but I don't want this to be bad weather. So I think like maybe it rains several hours hours earlier. There's still a little bit of wetness in the corner of um, of the floor. Yeah, so that might be something we could look at. Um, season, I think it doesn't really matter that much. I think I'm going for fall, end of summer. So there's a bit, there's some leaves already falling and things. Small, little bits of nature collecting in the corners of the room. Small dead leaves, etc. Uh, brush to the side, just to add a bit more um, irregularities to the scene, make it feel less perfect, more lived in. Uh, yeah, finally, here's some pictures I found of this location uh, from like 1800. This also helps a lot to to make you, yeah, to, to give a bit of an impression of what it was like uh, back then. Couldn't find so many pictures, unfortunately, but yeah, might as well include this. And that's how I usually approach research. If you can answer these questions, you have a few core references to look at for your colors, your lighting. Um, yeah. Eventually, you should be able to form a picture in your head, and it should make it a lot easier to uh, make your environments. Like I already have a strong idea of what this is going to look like in the final picture. So with that comes the the next step before we can make our block out i've got one thing we have to research and that's um the modularity that i mentioned a couple times here so how do we want to break this down what are some things that we already know we want to look out for later on in the project well as i said um before uh, trim sheets is one thing let me make a screenshot of that ceiling again. Let's put it in there. All right. So as I said, trim sheets is one thing. For those who don't know what trim sheets are, they're basically a tileable texture that tiles only in one direction. Let's see if I can find an example. Here's a nice, nice one. See how it's tiling horizontally? We have these. Let's grab another brush. So you have these, uh, yeah, these horizontal bars basically. And you can align textures or UVs on there to create these these kind of patterns really cheaply. So that's. Um, that's, that's a big focus here. What are a few things that could be trim sheets? Um, let's make this red. It might be a bit easier to read. So there's a few trims over here. That's definitely something I want to include. Then another one would be like these, these trims on the wall. I have no idea yet how I'm going to do that, but as I said, we're going to figure this out as we go along. And this thing is also, could also be a trim. Though I'm not sure, I think, I want to extrude this as a mesh actually, actually. Uh, yeah, so this is, this is going to be mesh. It's, it's not, trim. This could be a trim though. A 
as well as the, the big panel behind it, can all be a trim. I guess this as well. There we go. All trims. There's so many trims. All of it. Uh, same trim here. This is pretty much all the same pattern, repeating. Mm, anything else? Let's also cross this part. There we go. Maybe, yeah, this we could this could also be part of the wooden trim. There we go. The wooden beam, also part of the wooden trim. Let's actually for for the sake of this, it, uh, oh, so selection. So this is all wooden trim. Maybe this will be like a separate one. I think we could even include the doors. Why not? we go. Let's, uh, let's add this one as well. I'm confident we can add this one too. The, the door could be one. There we go, we got a trim over there. And another trim that you might not expect uh, are the carpets. So you've got this little edge here. Will it let me? So this is one. And then this could be one. And then you have this big red one. And you would say, what about the center bit? Does this mean we have to add a second bit material? Well, as you might notice, this actually repeats in four directions. So yeah, it would be way too big to add this whole thing into one material. But if we just add this one fourth of it and just mirror it over four times, that would fit on our trim sheet easily. And then one other thing we could do to make this even cheaper, you make it, um, I really like to save on my texture space and come up with some nifty ways in our shader. So, you, so let's say change the colors of the thing. And just so the texture um, will tell us the, the pattern and then within the shader we assign different colors. I think that would be really cool. So that way we could make it even cheaper, run all of this on one material, just have like a bunch of different patterns in rows. And we can just swap out instances on these drugs that are um, have different colors. So I think that would be a lot of fun. So this could all be trim sheets. Merge this. Put it on overlay. So this uh, can just go. So how will this be modular? Trim sheets plus uh, shaders. Cool. So that's already, yeah. So you think for everything that's non-tileable, 
or I mean uh, non-trim sheets. It's not much actually. So you have this stone material over here, then this uh, stucco material. <clears throat> Is there anything else? But it's only two types, yeah, there's three, three for the floor. So I'm sure there's going to be more um, as we go along, but as you can see here, it's actually one of yeah, so that's all. This can also be trims. All of this will be trims as well. So based on this research, we know a few things. Um, we're going to need probably around three trim sheets. One for the carpet. I will keep this separate because the carpet is very different from the wood in the stone. We might want to add some subsurface scattering in there or something, I'm not sure. These things are actually pretty thick, so maybe we won't need it. Then, yeah, then we have the stone trims and the wooden beams. And then we also have these like, very detailed ornaments, trims. And then we'll need three tileable textures, a stone one for the floor, a stone one for the walls, and then the stucco material. It's like here's a very clean version of the same thing. Oh yeah, this this is also you know what this could also be a trim. Let's put it on blue for now. It is this repeating color pattern. This is already um yeah, this is already helping us so much in the next stage when we're blocking out, we know what to look out for. Um, another way we could break this down modularly. Uh, okay, so now we know everything we want to do trim sheet wise. Let's see, what are some of the shapes? So one thing is this, this arch that we'll call like this. That's one thing we'll need. Um, there's this door frame. Here's the same door frame. And then there's like a few different windows, a large one, a medium one, and a square one. Then another thing is this indent shape. This could um, this could all be part of the same wall, I think. One great thing about this door being so obscured is we cannot see what's over here. So that lack of information we can use in our advantage, just copying this wall over. Um, over here. I think this one is going to be a unique one, fortunately. And then another thing would be just a regular wall, just something like this. And then maybe we need a, a smaller one for up here that, that will go like this. Mm, anything else? Oh yeah, there's also this stair. Let's make sure you guys can see this. So yeah, there's a stair going on here. So we'll need a model for that. So those are a few ways we could break this down. Yeah, and then there's a pillar here. It can be repeated uh, like this. Mm. 
Yeah, there's this wooden beam that we could reuse for this maybe. This phase might seem a little boring, but it's gonna speed up the, uh, the production of this whole project so much. It's, it's really important not to skip this phase because you'll face these questions eventually during the project and it's better to face them now because it's a lot easier to be like let's let's make this bit modular here and then you realize oh never mind it doesn't work you just it's a matter of erasing and trying it over here oh now it works imagine doing this later in the project where you're trying to model your your door frame with your fancy trims and everything and you texture it and then you realize oh this doesn't work imagine how much work you've spent on it yeah so that's that's why this is so important to do it now this also allow you to to better estimate how long this whole project is going to take at this point in time, I'm not quite sure. Um, if all goes well, I think I should be able to make an estimate by the end of the blockout, which comes uh, right after this. How far in the recording are we? 36 minutes. Let's add this to the, the presentation. I think we know enough for now. This program um, is called uh, PureRef, by the way, for those who are interested. It's this infinite um, canvas. That's great for references because uh, you can always keep it above all your other programs. Insert some text. So that's, that's kind of how I want to approach the trims in this project. Uh, and this is how I want to approach the modular well, wall bits. So now I think it's time to actually start making something. Next up, we'll go in. Uh, let me save this real quick. Let's uh, put this in the corner. First thing I will do um, is add a character for skill reference in the project. So when I import this in Unreal and I would play it, this is the this is how large it would be. So first let's add a plane. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to make a super, super rough block out. I'm not going to worry about modularity. I'm not going to worry about topology or anything. It's just about figuring out the shapes in 3D. It's going to be really quick and dirty. So I guess something like this. Let's make it a, it's fine. Maybe 10. So, try, I'm looking at these characters and trying to estimate 
how large this is. So again, looking at this, how much space does this take? This is a little over two thirds of the whole wall, the windows, or what do you call them, balconies. These three characters take up about this space. So this is about four characters wide, eight, 11 characters, something like that. Okay, I think it's it's fairly accurate. Let's add our first wall. I think this is somewhat. Let's um let's actually save our, our save us some headaches later on, and actually do this like a proper divisions, make make it a bit easier later on when making things modular. Don't worry about things things like this too much. Let's add a little door thingy. This is about the size of a door someone would enter. We want one here. Let's turn on my frames. Looking at this, like the diff uh, the the distance between this line and the door. Something like that, and then there's one over there. Next up. We have our stir case thingy. Stores are actually pretty wide. They, they're not that tall, there's not that much space between his hat and the ceiling. A little bit more. There we go. It starts about here, door, so it should be a little higher. Good. I think the staircase ends right in front of this door. Let's, uh, yeah, why not? Let's add a few steps to this as well. It's not really, we don't really need to do this, but I'm gonna merge this whole thing anyways later on. This be an appropriate step, I'm not sure. Okay, I'm spending too much time on this there. Cool. Uh, next up, but the uh, determine where this balcony starts. 
it's from here, I think. Not counting this wooden thing, just starting over here. Yeah, this is about right, so let's delete that for now. Then I want to decide this indent. I'm adding two divisions. That's fairly accurate. And we add our indents. Hold on. I need to figure out how this gap works. So there's a few blocks here sitting it's in there. Sitting on the ground, it's not yet. There we go. You know, we could. This is a little overcomplicating things, I guess, but. Yeah, no, that's, that's not overcomplicating things. Let's just use simple cubes. That works. And then I am gonna overcomplicate things a little bit here. So, let's use vertices. That's our floor. Yeah. So now we got this little staircase you can walk on. Here's the door. There's another door. I like it. Before we continue, let's uh, save this scene. It would be a shame if this crashes. Before we make this this uh, balcony area, let's make the other walls first. Trying to measure this arch and this little window. The window will be here.
Okay. This at the lowest point or the highest point of the arch is over here. Yeah, I, I like that. So let's add one more edge loop or two. Now Maya is having this issue lately. It doesn't like making edge loops for some reason. There we go. So it is. It doesn't have to be perfect. Move some angles real quick. Cool. That's done. That's that wall. I'm just focusing on the information that we know is here first. So having said that, let's add in this area. Let's see how like deep this goes. This goes pretty deep. So there's a door here and then yeah. Three times that length. Uh, of a small door. Let's make a small door. Something like that. Then, yeah, something like that. That's pretty accurate. So add a ceiling to this. Not quite sure yet how high this is. Figure that out in a moment. I think there's a door on the other side as well. Yeah. Let's duplicate this over. Perfect. How tall is it? At least as tall as the bottom part, I think a little bit taller. This is something like that, I guess. Also these things. So I'm gonna quickly copy this arch. Don't feel like making it a second time. Maybe we can quickly make it a bit more pointy in the middle of the reference. Yeah, good enough. So let's extrude this.
Okay. This is about half the thickness. Right, so the thickness of this is it's not really accurate, but it's not that big of a deal at this point in time. Yeah, something like that. It's a pretty thick wall. Add a few more details. Honestly, for this face, we don't need these many details, but it's not that big of a deal, so whatever. Go. This also tells us that this is about the same height where this indent stops. So we should do that as well. Somewhere over there. So we're almost there yet already. I'll get to that later. Being a perfectionist does not help with this. <laughs> okay. So I noticed that there's a little beam sitting above this. I'll include that, it's uh, safe for now. Okay, a few final details on these walls. There's a couple more windows. Let's add those. This is divided into two, pretty much. Oh. And then... There's sort of another little indent here. I'm getting a little quieter, it's because I'm not focusing. So is this still correct? I think it's a bit smaller now. 
feel it's getting a it's a little higher in the reference image. Maybe uh, maybe not. Let's add this window. Yeah, again the topology is pretty awful, but that's not important now. Okay, this this can sit right in the middle there. This one is sitting at the same like lower level, but it's a little shorter. So let's extrude these. Cool. I think that's this is all the information that we have from the picture. Actually, there's a door here. And in this picture, the door is sitting in the middle, so I'm going to do that as well. I'm going to leave this door where it is, because you cannot see it's in the picture. So instead, I'm going to follow this reference and then maybe make this over here next to it. Save, always important. Okay. Next up. Let's add the let's add another wall. What are we going to do here? We have a lot of greater freedom here. So what does this wall do? I kind of like how this also has an indent here and another one here. I'll put this on the side for now. So let's divide this into four strips. This is where we this divide. It's a big window here. It's another thing we have to figure out. There's so many different sized windows. Don't know how I'm gonna make those yet. And then there's a few more doors. One here. Slightly smaller and taller. And one here. And then at this wall, we'll have and indents the same as this one, so this will be kind of copied. Add another window here. I also want another window in here. This placement is going to kill me, but it's a problem for later me. What is this? 
here. So there's this decoration, this part. Let's see if we can add a little indication here of how that might look like later on. Something like that. It'll be super simple. This is the thing I'm talking about, this little. At least since it is window in there. So many windows. And then there's a, a door here. I think this is our wall. Oh yeah, there's another one of these over here. I think we can use the same pattern as will be on this part. In order to enforce that, let's add this uh, there as well. We are almost done. Another thing I want to add is that wooden beam that, that goes across here. This uh, fence, I mean. Let's open this up again. Yeah. Let's place our fella um, up there. See how that. So it's going to be a bit higher. Actually, no, I like the height. Thing is that floor is probably sitting a bit deeper. That's actually pretty accurate. Okay, we'll leave it. And then it's just. I have to add this one. Great. We have uh, one wall left. Do we need any more doors? I think I'll add another door because it'll just if we would leave this wall plain, it would look really dull. Let's uh, let's raise this ceiling. There's some imperfection here. I'm not sure what's, what's going on here. It uh, seems the walls bent. <laughs> Don't know why. This is always like that. Oh, there we go. That's where I messed up. 
Okay, save and then let's look at the reference again. Okay, there's a couple of windows here. I really like that. Here's the pattern again. We could reuse that. Does that mean there's an indent? Yeah, that's a little bit of an indent. Okay, let's do that first. Another question we have to answer is, is this courtyard square? If you look down, there's a reference here. Look down, it, it, it goes like this, it's slanted. I kind of like that, but it'll introduce a bunch of new problems. So I think, yeah, I think I'm just leaving it square. I don't want to make it too difficult for myself. So let's restrict it. Actually, you know, before we extrude it, we need to add the vertical line and that goes to a little under the top of this window. Now, oh, actually, let's align it. Maya. Oh, it's selecting all the other edges. Let's align it with this one. I like that. Now we can extrude it. Why is it? What's happening? So yeah, let's align it with this wall, that'll make it a lot easier. Then why not bring this back in a moment? Let's do that, and then bring our pattern back. Scale it down. This one goes all the way across. And then we take our door. Let's see, do we want to add one or two doors? Come back to it in a moment. So I'm gonna add a small window here, and then another door next to it. The reference there two more vertical doors next to each other. That means I have to make another door. Do I want that? It's also a lot of extra space compared to the uh, Reference. So, what if I? Oh, you like to see that? Okay, I think. Just uh, this is. I did not calculate this edge. That's that's a happy accident. So 
I think I'm just going to do it like that. That's the bottom floor. And then I want to add a couple more windows and then we're done, I think. The window here. There's a big window here. I think it looks really cool. Okay, so these are the windows. Let's save. Anything else I want to add here? I think this is good for now. Okay, so now the final step for this episode. We're already past an hour. Okay. Let's, um, let's combine this whole thing. Don't combine the character. Let's uh, center it. And then um, we're going to export it. Small block out. Okay, now FBX. And then we're going to import it uh, in Unreal. Okay, these settings are good. All right, uh, next up, let's add this into the scene. So delete the floor, we don't need that. Uh, we also don't need reflection capture. Don't need the fog. Uh, don't need a player start. Let's just drag this into the scene, set it to the zero, zero location. One thing I do want to add is uh, post-process volume. Disable the exposure because we don't need it. Um, also, the light is shining through these walls, as you can see, because they don't have the backside. So let's uh, let's add a quick material. And we're going to make it uh, two sided. Don't have to do anything else, really. One thing we could do is uh, add a bit of a color. Let's 
It's not too bright. Yeah, okay, so there is a bit of bleeding. It's, it's not a big issue. But if you really mind, you can. The solution would be to. Uh, One solution would be to add a few cubes to each side. I think that should fix it, but yeah. This geometry is super, super sloppy. Because it does not matter at this point, I'll show you. But yeah, it, it does have some uh, drawbacks. Let's put this on movable. Now I'm going full screen, hide the icons. And here you can see, let's move this back. This is what our uh, level is going to look like. So now you have some idea. So, um, something I noticed right away is these, these windows feel very small. Uh, this empty this area is a bit empty. Also, doesn't feel as tall as I thought it was gonna feel. So maybe I wanna raise the ceiling a bit. Let's check it against the reference. Yeah, so this feels extra high because I added the, the beam here. Um, Yeah, so this reference is very much focusing on just this little area. But I want, definitely want this to feel larger. This is this area feels okay. Let's do just checking everything at the moment. Uh, Something we could do is add in a camera. A camera here. Where is it? Let's make it a vertical camera. Uh, I'm just gonna try and like imitate this this painting. This is also the final step for today for this episode. So we're almost there. It's just some minor tweaks at this point. Perspective is not as extreme focal length. Well, I can't do much about that. This is somewhat what you're seeing. Let's slow the camera down. Is there a beam here? Oh, there's actually a beam here. It's kind of blending with the background. Then still this, this beam needs to be smaller. Let's lock this camera for now. Uh, this is pretty accurate. Back in Maya. It's smaller, move it backward 
it's So I'm going to do something about this arch. I could blend it into the wall like that. Um, that's, you know what? That's actually how it, how it works, I think. So let's delete these faces. Let's move these faces. Yeah, I think that's already better. It's already like moving these, these things on the side. Okay. Is there anything else that's not working here? Oh yeah, the ceiling needed to be a bit higher. So, let's grab this, let's move this up. Move this up like that. Don't this to be too high. Oh, so hold on. Final details, there's, there's some shapes up there. Would be fun to have those there. A little box there. Anything else? Let's add one over there. And then Next one there, maybe one here, whatever, that doesn't matter. Mesh, combine, just transform everything, can file, export, oh, save everything, go in real, re import it. Ooh. Oh, that's a lot better, okay. I think this is indented a little bit too much, but that's, that's, that's no biggie. Move this back. It doesn't clip. And with that, I think we are done with the first phase. We have our blockout. Now we know what this is. Um, we have some, uh, some indication of what this project is going to look like. I think it's really important to import something into Unreal as soon as possible, as you just saw. 
in Maya you don't um, you don't always uh, get the feeling of you don't quite get the scale right. Like it's not yeah, and Unreal you, you actually get to see what it looks like through the camera of the player, and it's often quite different from the camera in Maya. This one gives you a better idea of the scale, the proportions. And also how the lighting interacts with the shapes. So at this point we could already grab a grab a light source. Let's say we want want this to, uh, to shine into the building. So maybe we want it to shine on this little thing. This is already stuff we can start to discuss, start to think about it. So maybe you want the lights to shine on here, then have all the little, uh, what's it called, the little lights by the lanterns and everything on the other side. So we have those here. Just for fun, add a couple of these. So we have this like warm light over there. Maybe another one here. Oh, also in the reference, there was an arch here. There's nothing here. Maybe we'll just leave this wall as is. Just cover this up with all the. I'm thinking about using this corner for uh, to really clutter it with with carpets like here. But yeah, that's that's for a later day. I think with that, I want to conclude this uh, video. Next video, we're gonna do a first iteration on the modular assets. So what we're gonna do is break this down into very simple shapes uh, that are then going to be made into the detailed ones uh, in the final game. So after this we'll have the whole level build up of the final shapes, but they're very simple, but it, yeah, it'll be constructed uh, in, a, in a proper way, not in a dirty mess like this. Um, yeah, for those who have stuck around for all video, thank you for watching and um, see me in the next one. Bye-bye.